rolled out of the window and then hit the guy. I just walked back. What happened just to uh, happen to walk back? Okay. Back in the 1600s, there's no law regarding negligence. There's no law regarding negligence. So the Lord, the Lord judge, it's the Lord, was scratching his hand and saying, well, obviously somebody made a mistake. Somebody committed wrongdoing. <laughs> like that. <laughs> But there is no law to punish. Okay, there's no law to punish the wrong way. Right. So the law back in 1600. So he thinks that he come up, he came up with this law, rest in some particular. He says, well, this is so obvious. Okay, that something is not right. Prove no further or make him liable for this action. Okay? So the thing speaks for itself. The thing is so obvious. We don't even need to prove any further. Okay? We don't even need to prove the standard of care. Nothing further. We'll just help, which is hold this guy liable for negligence. Talk about causation. Okay? So we have two causations. One's called the actual causation, the other one is called the precedent causation. Okay? So to analyze a actual causation, we apply a path for test. Okay? In this case, our car accident case. Chantel was up in the fourth floor, and her head was hit by a by a uh, marijuana pot. Oh my! Okay, yes. right here. Okay. But why did it cause this? Because well, the car hit the pole, light pole, light pole, uh, bent, and then hit the building. The building start to vibrate and caused the the pot to fall. Okay. So Chantel's injury will not occur, but for Barry's. Negli negligent, um, driving negligently. Okay. So if you don't drive negligently, none of this will happen. But for your action, Chantel has got hit by a pot of marijuana. Okay. Does it make sense? Okay. So your action actually caused Chantel's injury. Okay, so that's the actual cause, but for cause. Now, but sometimes the law says, remember Cardozo says, that's too far, it's too remote, okay? So the key thing, key word for proximate proximate cause is again, foreseeability. So legally, the court creates a limitation on how far the injury can go, how far the causation can go. It only goes to a foreseeable pleasure, and it stops there. Okay? So if this light pole bent over and hit another car, it's probably foreseeable. Okay, but it's, if this light pole bent over and hit the building where Chantel's head is hit by a part of marijuana pot. That's unforeseeable, okay? So legally, the courts create the limits on who can sue, okay? Who can, who can sue um, based on the, who can sue caused by 
in this case, Barry's action. Okay, so, um, yeah. In a work, real work, world scenario, we see there's a three color pile up. Okay. So the first color that created the action, you can see that first one. So the other two cards, you can see that one. But let's say someone's rubber neck when it happened, and then they get an accident. Is that too far? Some of some of what? Rubber necking? Okay, okay, okay. The okay. other direction? Yeah. And then they cause an accident. And they also sue the first person with the first accident, or is that too far from So you said you said you said the the first accident caused a disruption for the other driver. Yeah. So there's a three car pilot. And I, I assume those three those two of the girls can sue the first car or like sign. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. But but, but I will have a best defense. Okay, you are mainly responsible for your own accident, right? So you are majority, majority or majorly contribute, contri contri I can't explain that. Contribute to the accident. So you are majorly liable for the accident. But actually, my the second part is that someone's rubbernecking. Is that too far from the proximity? <sighs> yeah, I think maybe, maybe, maybe. All right. Any questions? I have a question. Yeah. So what if these two cars <coughs> hit each other, boss and link? I don't know what is it. But right. Other two cars hit each other because of these two cars. Mm -hmm. That's the same question. Oh. Because how? What do you mean? So, like in the freeway, for example, uh -huh. two cars hit each other like from the behind, and they stop the traffic immediately. Mm -hmm. Two other cars in the other line, because of this, two cars stop the traffic, so they hit each other. How did it occur? So we have two lines. What do we think? Because these two cars had an accident, so they got into accident. Yeah, the, so the traffic stopped okay. immediately, like suddenly. So they were in the, the car? In the yeah, so yeah. other two car, one like with his like break and the other one yeah. from the back. Are they going to suit those two? You're on the side of the Let me say it again. Okay, there are two cars in the front. Now, there are two cars right here colliding into, exactly, into each yes. other. The two more cars that just hit into these two cars. Yes. Okay. No, they hit each other, the other two cars. The other one hit each other, but they hit here. Yes, because oh. of the traffic, it's just a stop, right? Right now. Okay, let's say they're trying to avoid this collision. Yes. Okay, so they collide into, into, yes. into each other. Yes. Uh, yes. They can sort who make it. They could apportion their liability. Oh. They were going to do a calculation of whose fault was it, who's at fault. Because when they hit each other, someone is at fault. Someone will participate in the overall damage. We need to come up with, we need to come up with, the, with the, uh, the calculation. Okay. So that's why when we talk about the defense of negligence, the first one will be contributory negligence or the comparative negligence. Okay? So, Ali, you are driving 90 miles an hour on the freeway. Okay? And you got into a car accident with Barry. Can Barry sue you for negligence? Yes, because I was driving. Yeah, because you were, were speeding a lot, right? You were speeding. But at the same time, they were driving 110, uh, 110 miles per hour. I saw that. I saw that. Right. So then that's your defense. Well, you know, you are the major reason. You are the biggest reason we got into an accident, right? So you are con so you contribute contributory negligence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So your best defense is well. Contribute, contribute to negligence yourself, you, Barry, to contribute to this accident. Okay? Now, California, so contributory negligence and comparative negligence are very similar legal theories, okay? But the difference is under contributory negligence, there are four different variations, but mainly under contributory negligence, if you are at fault, okay? If you're gonna sue, uh, if Barry sues you, and Barry is at fault, Regardless of how many percent, maybe just one percent. Okay. Uh, who's going to? I'm sorry. He's going to sue Barry is going to sue you. Okay. I'm going to sue him again. Barry is going to sue you because you drive ninety percent, not ninety miles Nine. per hour. Okay. All right. But your defense is Barry. You are also speeding. 
even faster than I did. Okay? So if the court finds Barry is at least 1% at fault, then he cannot sue you under pure contributory negligence. Okay? So your fault right here in this case bars the entire action. Okay? But California doesn't follow contributory negligence. California follows comparative negligence. What it means is you got to offset. You got, it's going to offset the damages. Okay? So for example, in this case, Ali, you're going to sue Barry for this. And the court decided, well, Ali, you are 40% at fault. Barry, you are 60% at fault for this accident. And the total overall damage is $1 million. How much do you think you can recover? 400. 400,000 and here's 600. Because I have 40 and here's 60. So what did you get? What is it? So what did you get? You're 40% at fault. It's 60% at fault. So he pays 600,000. The overall is $1 million. 600,000, 400,000. But you were suing him. Yeah, but the, the court... How much can you get? Okay. The overall damage is one million dollar. Okay. With an Ali, you are forty percent at fault. Barry, you are sixty percent at fault. Now Ali sues Barry. How much can Barry get? I'm sorry. Ali. Ali sues Barry. How much can Ali get? Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred? Yeah. What? Sixty percent, forty percent. What's the difference? Forty. Twenty. Forty percent. Sixty percent. The difference is twenty percent. So your that sixty percent is offset by your forty percent, so you can only recover twenty percent. And the, of the other twenty for who? Hmm? The other twenty. Just no other twenty. So forty and sixty is one hundred percent. So you yeah. said two hundred, which does mean uh, that's how much you get. Percentage, you know? because you are forty percent at fault, it's sixty percent at fault. So your forty percent offset is sixty percent, so there's only twenty percent left. Yes. So he can only pay you, he will only pay you 20% of the overall damage. That's $200,000. Oh, he's gonna pay my 20. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. That's all you get now. Even though the overall damage is probably 500, 500, 500, 500, but you can only get 20. Yeah. Okay. All right, any questions? Well, the next defense for a negligence is assumption of risk. You assume the risk, okay? You assume the risk. So when you go into Great America, okay? You read the back of the ticket, there's a lot of disclaimers. And when you get on a roller coaster, there's a big, huge sign saying, you must be how many, how, how many, how, how many years old? How much years? Yes, 18. How many years old? You have to be uh, a body weight of how much? 18. I don't know. And uh, 18. You oh, cannot boy. have a heart condition before you get oh, okay. a roller coaster. Okay. So Nicole is none of those, right? You're old enough. You don't have a heart condition. You get on the roller coaster. Okay. In the middle of spinning, twisting around, and, and there's a mechanical problem. Okay. So remember, there's a safety mechanism, right? That locks you in the seat, okay? So in the middle of that, that just went, that gave up. Ooh. So in the middle of the spinning, Nico fly out. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, and See landed you, on the concrete. And that goes Nico. <laughs> All right? Now, when your family found to sue Great America, can they say, well, you were swimming the rest by getting by getting on there, okay? Yeah, but there was a mechanical problem, so it's not her fault, it's the great American fault. Oh, well, of course it's their fault, but did he assume this risk? Did she assume this risk? No. No, right? You assumed some risk, but not flying out of the, um, uh, the roller coaster, out of the seat, and, and and, and, and land yourself in on the on the, on the concrete to get there. Would the risk stop the lawsuit for say whiplash from weather riding or something like that, or would they still have to pay out for that too? Okay, let me give you a please come. Hurry up. Okay, what 
Okay. Well, so let me give you an example. This is a real thing that we can do. So, you know, there was a there are hot hot air balloons in Napa Valley. Okay. Right? Yes. I did. Okay. So, no, I did. Okay. Great. So, like I said, that is the risk that you can assume. Okay. Because hot air balloon is very dangerous. It is foreseeable that people will die. It's foreseeable it can be dropped. So, unless you can prove gross negligence on the part of the company, which means they know there's probably a big hole right there, but they didn't care about it, still let it onto the air. And then it dropped and people died. That's gross negligence. Okay, unless you can prove that, then your weaver will probably bar you from suing the company. And that's the assumption of the risk. They drag the basket from, from field to field, right, and hit it a couple of times, and that's probably okay. And because you assume that risk. All right. Well, now let's finish up with negligence. Okay, go to uh, strict liability. difference between strict liability and negligence just by looking at the elements. Yeah, absolute, there's an absolute duty to make safe. So there's no standard of care. Yeah, there's no standard to the duty. You have a absolute duty to make safe. Uh, anybody has a pet? mechanisms to keep the tiger within the cage. Okay? To keep people get from to to prevent people to get to the tiger and to prevent the tiger from escaping from the cage. Okay? Everything you can do is spend like two million dollars in that cage. Okay? Alright? Good? Okay? All possible way. Okay? Electric fans, whatever, okay? DNA, you know, block. <laughs> Uh, they have to scan your eyes oh before you can feed yeah, the tiger. Okay? All the technology. But what happened is, on one night, a stormy night, okay, there's a lightning struck the cage. Okay? And uh, because, you know, lightning is tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of volts, so it, the lightning disabled all the safety mechanism of the cage, and the tiger got out. Okay? okay. And John, unfortunately, you're just leaving next door to this tiger cage. So the tiger jumped over the fence, and then go into your house and attacked you. Okay? So you're missing half of your body. Now, you're suing Sharon for 
for negligence. Insurance for negligence. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Really? Absolutely. Really? Yes. Okay, negligence here. Let's look, at, let's look at negligence. Duty. What's your duty to keep the tiger safe? Yes. Yes. All right? Right? Did she breach the duty? Yeah. Did she breach the duty? Yeah. She put $2 million and by all possible mechanisms, mechanisms to keep the tiger safe. I don't think she breached that duty. That's all possible way out there to keep an animal in a cage. Okay? Did it cause the, the damage? Yes. yes. It's not for and it's approximate. If the tiger got out, um, your half body will still be there, but for the tiger got out, then of course, when the tiger got out, it's foreseeable that a neighbor become a, 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 a victim. And what is your damage to your body? Now, well, you see, this is how you are, you are going to answer the homework questions and in the exams. What is the issue here? The issue here is, is whether children as a tiger owner has a duty to act reasonably, okay? But if I go into analysis, okay? A duty, yes, because she owns a tiger as a pet, okay? As a reasonable owner, she has a duty to. Now, what's your breach? That's the second issue. Your analysis will be, okay, because she spent all this money, by, by all the safety measures trying to keep the tiger safe. Um, so therefore, I don't think there's a breach. So that's your conclusion, I grab, all right? So the next issue is whether the, uh, the tiger got to cause the injury, right? And then going to buff or plus that, and then it's all about damage. So you see, you have a little eye right here. What is the issue analysis and the conclusion? A little eye right here, here, and here. Then you can reach to a bigger conclusion. No, John cannot sue John for Okay? I guess they can because she's keeping like a danger animal in her house. So. Oh no, John can Cancer. sue Sharon, yes. but just not under, not under negligence. He's going to sue under strict liability. Because having a wild animal as a pet, it's very dangerous. So we don't care what happened or how you keep your animal. If anything happens, you You have an absolute, absolute duty to keep your tiger safe. Okay? If the tiger is caused some damage to people, we don't care your duty. We're holding you liable on the street liability. I remember reading somewhere that no matter how secure the cage is, that it fails under two different relations. Sure, liability. Yep. We don't care. Okay? We don't need to prove we don't need to prove duty. Okay, because the duty is absolute. Okay? And then the rest will follow the same analysis as negligible. So what if the tiger is a dog? What if the tiger is a dog? So now we're not talking about the wild animals. Yes. Now we're talking about the domestic animals. The, the, general dog rule, to... the general rule is the first bite is free. Free. The first bite is free. Okay. Free. Because yes, free. What do you mean by free? So no You are not you, you 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 cannot be held strictly liable. Strictly liable. Only because you're dogged by someone. Okay? It's only because when you know your dog is a vicious dog. And then you still didn't put up any whatever that you do. Okay? And if you knew your dog is vicious, then we're gonna hold you strict strictly liable. Okay, so how do you know the dog must attack someone first? Okay? In, in the history, your dog has a violent history. Not for the first people. time. Right, but for the first time, negligence maybe, but not under strict liability. So he can sort her. For strict liability? No. Yes. Not for the first time. What if the first bite is caused by, you know, a neighbor is walking by and just gives a mean kick to it and then it bites him back? Would that history be used again if for some reason the guy kicked him again and bit him? Would they use that history against him? Probably not. Okay. Probably not. Well, we're going to argue the case because it's, it's a factual, um, there's a factual basis to argue the case. Okay, what caused the first bite? Okay. Was the dog was defending itself? That, that, that in that case, the dog was not vicious. 
If the dam is not vicious, the owner cannot be held strictly liable. Okay? Yeah. So in seven TV in a real court, a TV show is called like real court. So a dog from this house like, jumped to other house and there was a like, small dog mm -hmm. and he attacked the small dog. Mm -hmm. So the judge uh, like put her like thousand two hundred dollars for this dog because mm -hmm. he beat this dog. Mm -hmm. Is that true? So the dog attacks attacks dog. Attacks another small dog. Well, uh, and this one Sally, like, completely. Sally, this has nothing to do with torts. Oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say torts. It has nothing to do with bodily injury. Dog attacks dog, and pet are considered as property. Okay, property damage. Yes. Okay. Considered as a property damage. Yeah, that's what property. Is. Okay. I've got a question of the neighbors. Even the same with the tiger at the zoo. So you, the zoo has health and strict liability for keeping the tiger in a cage, but then there's the gross negligence of the two boy kids who are talking and, and I don't know what came up with. They said it. They said it. We don't know how much. Well, the zoo will not let this case go to the trial. Okay. If they settle for ten million dollars, mm -hmm. the jury jury will probably award them a lot more. Okay. Because it, it's it's the tiger cut up from Right. Okay, so wild animal, right? And then strict liability. The vicious dog, strict liability. So what else is strict liability? If the activity is abnormally dangerous, okay? If it's abnormally dangerous, and then we're gonna we're gonna hold it strict liable. We're gonna hold that person or the activity strict li strict liable. So Chanel. Not only Chantel grows marijuana in her apartment, okay? Right. She also has a meth lab in her kitchen. Okay. So a lot of chemicals, a lot of testing tubes and whatever, okay? And then, by all means, she is not a drug dealer. Which means that she doesn't really know how to make meth. So by doing mixing all the powders, they created an explosion. Okay? On 12th floor, that's where she lives. Okay? And then next door that lives Nalina, right? I see your name right, okay. Right. So what happened is the explosion caused uh, some sort of uh, well let's say uh Big dash. Well, I would say one of the, the walk left and then came from the hotel. And now she's trying to sue you for strict liability. Okay. Now, because making meth or, um, um, or creating something explosive or any sort of chemical um, by creating some sort of chemical product and without knowing really how to do it and do it in your kitchen may rise to a level of abnormally dangerous level. Okay? If he can prove, if she can prove that your activity is abnormally dangerous, okay, and then she can win to win on the strict liability. Okay? So what if I change the fact? Shanta was not making that. She was making TNT, okay? Or she was making C4 in her kitchen. And then they cause the explosion. Half of the building is gone, okay? Now, can they sue you a strict liability? And that's a more likely yes, because making a explosive, like a C4 a TNT, is very dangerous. It's abnormally dangerous. And if anything goes wrong, then you are liable. We don't care about how carefully you are handling your powder or how you, how you make them. Okay? If anything goes wrong, then you are liable. Okay? Do you want to take another break or is it just uh, how are you doing this? Great? Hmm? I guess we just continue so we can finish it and leave. Okay, we're going to keep on going. 
just my opinion. I don't know. Guys. Oh, it's just my opinion. Ask the other classmates. Okay. Okay. So, we're done with strict liability. The next one we're going to talk about is product liability. Product liability. Well, to sue under product liability, you have five different reasons or five different ways to sue it. One, intentional tort. Okay? Intentional tort. Tom, I sell you my car. I sell you my car. But I didn't like it. So by the time I gave it to you, I cut 90% of the brake fluid. <laughs> right, when you're going down a hill, you die. And you're trying to sue me. You're probably trying to sue me. Intentional tort. Okay? Product liability. Intentional. Two, you can sue under negligence. Okay? The manufacturer was negligent in yeah. making the product. Three, strict liability. You can sue under strict liability for the defective product. Four, that's warranty. Okay? You can sue under warranty. And number five, you can sue under misrepresentation. So there are five ways you can sue for your product liability. Okay? So let me show you, let me, let me, so let's see here. Manufacturing defect, that's one of the, uh, the product, product defect. So if a whole line of the products, every single one, one of them has a problem. Okay, every single one of them has, a, has the same problem. That's a manufacturing defect, defect, okay? So if you, you buy a, a, a lawn mower, okay? We are moving, we are moving the, uh, the lawn and the blade just flies out. So all this bad, like 20,000 of the mower, they all fly out, okay, during the, during the project operation. And then it is a manufacturing defect. That's one. Two, there might be a design defect, okay? Because it's poorly designed. Okay. Now, um, who drinks smoothie in the morning? Only. Sharon. <laughs> so, Sharon, do you, what, what type of blender do you use? It's just the regular, the, the uh, Oster, one of those brands. Okay. How much do you pay for it? Mm -hmm. 30 bucks. 30 bucks. So, Sharon, every morning, uh, cold? Food? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. So, every morning, uh, Sharon uses Oscar blender to make a cold smoothie, okay? So it just happened that last weekend, she was watching TV. There was a you know, Vita Power fancy blender, right? That you can make a soup with. <laughs> so she's like, I'm gonna make a soup with my blender, okay? So putting all this stuff, you know, ingredients, and putting hot water, and putting the top, and turn on it. You gotta be speeding really, really at a really high speed to make a soup. Because I had to be the power. It's yeah. really, really fast. But of course, it was not designed for handling a hot soup. Okay? The Oscar blender. So it exploded and you got severely burned. Okay? Now, whose fault was it? Your fault. Her fault. Huh? Her fault. Right? Okay? Now, after she was burned, she found she 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 she, she dig out the user manual and I don't know why, but you still keep the original box. Okay. So the manual consists of 50 pages, 25 pages English, 25 pages Spanish. Okay. At page 24, at the very bottom, a very fine print it says, "Cold drinks only." Okay. Never make hot soup. <laughs> And in the box, he was trying to find the same warning. He actually, he, she found it. Not in the outside of the box, but inside of the box. It says, very small prints. Okay? Cold drinks only. Never used for hustling. She has the password. Now, now whose fault was it? It's her fault, but she can suit the company. Okay. Because it's not obvious enough to, to see. Okay. Now, what, what, 
what would the manufacturer say? The Oscar would say, well, you misuse the product. It was designed for cold drinks only. But how do you come back to that argument? You didn't make it apparent. I didn't know this is for cold drinks only. The warning was inadequate. Okay. So, so inadequate warning is a type of design defect. So she can sue them? She can't or she can't? She can. She can? Yes. Yes. Because it's not... The warning is not big enough. If there's huge warning, 90% of the box says, do not use no make costume, then she, then she will lose because the manufacturer will say, you misused my product. Okay, you assume the risk. Aren't these defects normally where they want to use uh, recalls to help fix that so they don't end up with a legal problem? Well, that's one. That's two. What if you don't recall? If you know there's a problem and you don't recall, and people fuck down about it, what's going to happen? They're going to sue you. That, that's what happened for, to Ford. And okay. GM. I think it's Ford. And Toyota. The brake. Well, Toyota is not so much. I think there's a conspiracy against Toyota. I believe. Well, I have the most recent one. It's actually cool that I bought. It's so cheap. It's one of the vehicles. Really good stuff. So. Well, but we have look, for the rear wheel drive, I think it was the, the early 80s, late 80s. There are uh, problems with Ford, but it cost them more to fix it. So they decided not to recall the rear wheel drive. And there was a hefty fine for that. They paid a big price for it. For it. Okay. Question. I guess there was a suit about Starbucks when they making like really hot uh, coffee. And I guess it's filled in someone and it's burnt up. So and he and he sued them because it was. You, you were there for for the McDonald's class. McDonald's. McDonald's. For the two cars. For the two cars. Only the but got the copy of McDonald's. Drive the car, copy between the thighs and and, and, and stop at the traffic light, and speed up, spill the coffee, burn, sue McDonald's. Six million dollars. Six million. Coffee's hot. There should be like coffee's hot. But remember, that was for purely damage, right? We are going to punish McDonald's, so you don't do this again. And there are, there are 2,000 similar complaints prior to this. That means you're coming out with coffee. coffee's hot. Well, no, it's a coffee a product. Oh. I don't know. It's coffee a product? It's coffee a product? A product? Can you yeah. sue McDonald's for the profit liability? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. Right. Okay, well, what was that? Uh, why are you laughing? Did I ask you a question? Yes. I have to work, you know, to defend nature, you know, uh, risky, you know, the risk. If I want to be a lady I want to be a son of the person in my body. I want to be able to help somebody. And I heard of that. Okay, so so you you help someone yes and then but you hurt yourself yeah okay well that was the same question with the trans America so if if uh, that person put himself in that situation like Major Lee but then you helping him and you hurt you hurt yourself and you can sue for negligence okay no risk no risk you hear and I said. Uh, well, well, I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to keep going. We'll get okay. him in slack. Um, I need to complete tonight's lectures, but you can ask him later. Okay? Uh, what was that? Blender? Oh, uh, anybody buy, uh, bought a used car before? Used car? Used car. Yeah. Used car. Okay? Uh, what does it say on the contract? I the biggest word? No warranty. No warranty. No. Well, sometimes no. no warranty. As it is. As it is. A big, a big a contract like this, right? It's as is. <laughs> that bit is like half of the page. As okay. Yeah. The saying that when you're selling a car, as long as you don't know any like um, ridiculous defect, that as long as you're not aware of anything, does that protect you as well? Or? But so okay. if let 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 put a high quote for this. You want the car, you must. You belong. Must. Okay. As is. Okay. You drive. It drove the car left the uh, the demon ship and uh, 
half an hour later, okay. the transmission just dropped. Put over a smoke came out, and then the transmission is all over the place on the street. Hmm. Okay. But do you think that this assist can protect you? No. No, I don't think so. There's a lemon mob. Isn't there a lemon mob? Lemon mob is the That's same problem that occurs so many yeah. times. And then you can go back and get okay, Let's just return the car. And lemon mob here applies to the new car. I think. I did a double check that. Or, or the car was warranty. Does it matter how old the car is? Like if someone sells you a Model T or something? or what? <laughs> Well, when it comes to reasonable. Okay. It will be reasonable enough. What would be Remember, there's reasonable? no, there's no black and white. The law is all about great, okay? Right. And then if you drive the car, and then two months later, the turn loose and drop, and then you want to go back and get a new car. Yeah? I was going to say, because I sold a 64 Impala, and you know it gave me half and half reliable service. Like sometimes it would work, and sometimes it would make me want to throw you know, rocks at it. So if that stops working, you want to do it. If that stop working, you can ask Doc to throw a rock at your car. <laughs> Exploded, you have a spare Oscar, you never wanted it anymore. You sold it to me with a big note. Coaching's only, never a house. <laughs> okay? Now, anything happened to that blender, who can I sue under certain company? Tasco. The Tasco? Yes. The manufacturer? No. Yes, the manufacturer. But it's Costco, you sure you want to Yes, you can sue Tasco because then is there the manufacturer. Costco is now the yeah. Oscar, yes. So you, Oscar, yeah. Right, but can we sue Costco? Well, you didn't buy it from Costco. So it's not Costco problem. I didn't do this with her, but can, though my question is, can I sue Costco? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the commercial. You sued Costco, and Costco sued Oxford. No, they will figure it out. Yes, they will. They will figure it out. Yeah. I don't care. But, sure. Question. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Costco, you said that they have a product. I don't know if, um, if this is um, something I can sue for. I, I bought a product from them, and it was one of those ready-to-go salads. Mm -hmm. It said ready-to-go salads, mm -hmm. you know, one of those bowl salads, mm -hmm. and I found the bug right, in it. Before the virus Yeah, yeah it's like chicken, chicken seed and salad, yes. Right, <laughs> and I found a bug. What? Oh, I found a bug, okay. Yeah, but I, I, I went to Costco and complained. Mm -hmm. All they did is replace it. Okay. Well, what's your damage? Uh, but okay. For a tort, so remember, I'm sure I would it is that you have to sue on the tort thing, so you have to have some sort of positive injury to oh, go okay. okay? And then, or if I'm possible, I mean, my best defense is, hey, this is organic. <laughs> it's gonna be damaged. So she got a stomach hit, for example. Hmm? She got, got stomach. sick, right? Yes. Yeah. And she missed a good business opportunity. Prove it. Because of the... Uh, prove it. That's the problem. Prove it. Okay? Certainty is the biggest problem. I can't problem. bring my friend. Uh, they will prove it. Okay? So let's go back. Can I sue? Well, of course I can sue if the Oscar's pro product is pro problematic. I can sue the manufacturer, right? But can I sue Costco? Yes. Why? Because you bought it from Costco. I didn't buy it. She bought it from Costco. But they don't know. They don't know. They know. Because oh, you have... Uh, we're assuming everybody knows everything. Oh. Okay? Can I sue Costco? Yes, yes, sir. You just don't like Costco. <laughs> okay, the answer is yes, because 
Costco is in the, 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 the stream of commerce in this case, okay? It is a commercial supplier. Okay? Now, can I sue Sherman by selling me a defective product? Mm, no. Because she's a victim like you. Hmm? She's a victim like you. She's what? A victim? Maybe. A victim? No, 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 no. no. But she, what she was wrong with it? Well, but, but, but what if it's defective for some other reason? Like a, there's a air bubble in the container and the link flies out and cut my hair. I like my hair. <laughs> Can I, but can I sue? No, you didn't know, but can I? Well, same problem, defective. Costco didn't know that it's problematic, but I can sue Costco. But can I, can I sue you? No, you're not a manufacturer or a commercial supplier. That's right. So I cannot sue her for this. What? She is not a commercial supplier. She is not. Okay? She's neither a manufacturer nor a commercial supplier. So that was a homework question where it was the car wash. Yeah. Um, so the lady who got a car wash got hurt and her car got totaled or something. And she was suing the manufacturer of the car wash. Mm -hmm. What do you call it? The car wash cleaner. Mm -hmm. okay. she, under strict liability. Mm -hmm. So she can. But I want to see your analysis. Okay, I want to see your analysis. Okay. All right. And then warranties. Okay. So a lot of times when I say warranty, these are implied warranties. So this is standard to a product. This is standard to a product. If you fail to perform under this product, then you breach the implied warranty. Okay? Hey, Professor. Yeah? Can I sue the attorney or the lawyer or the doctor mm -hmm. for this practice? For this practice, mm -hmm. we do something wrong, mm -hmm. and I sue you, I you, I you. Okay. Okay. And you do my case. And I don't satisfy for what you do. Okay. This place is well, like say, I do, well, I hand, no? you are, your question is if you hire me as your lawyer, yeah. and then you pick me good money, yeah. and you didn't like the results. Yeah. Okay? And that alone is not enough. Yeah. Okay? Because people hire a lawyer because they have problems. You don't expect the problem to be resolved 100% in your field. No way. It's just not real. Okay? For the least, or the other word, not well, say, I don't accept this or the set. But in the other word, you know, I know you know, two, there what you're supposed be, to do. There must be some you know. wrongdoing on the attorney's part yeah. that give rise to real practice. The result alone is not enough. Okay? I'm supposed to object to this motion, but I didn't, and you lost the case. Yes, then you can sue me for that. Okay. With an example of law malpractice be, you know, back in the 30s where they, uh, or, you know, either movie stars or music stars, they write these contracts where basically all the rights to their music and basically everything they do is, is sold in the company. And they kept doing that for a living, just taking advantage of the people who didn't know how, how to interpret the law. Would that be considered uh, malpractice or no? That was basically a job, right? These uh, gross contracts. I don't think it's a job, right? It's a one-sided contract, and uh, right? Yeah. It's super pro the producers, but not to the artists. All we can do is we can claim the contract is intentional. No reasonable mind would enter into a contract like this. But what if it's written in such a way that no regular person would be able to understand it? You know, it's told in so many ones. Legal terms. So what you do is you void the contract, you don't right. sue the lawyer. So there was a case actually before. So yeah, what am I going to do? Okay, uh, very quick story. So there's a black lady. There's an African American lady. Uh, 
who goes into a, I think, electronic store, a electronic store or a furniture store. She's poor, she has no money. But the salesman was that good. So the salesman sold her so many things that she doesn't need. Okay? And then even right now, if you go to like airport appliances, and if you go to those, you know, you pay, you pay installments, you make monthly payments. So what they do is, they, for example, if you buy 10 items for $10,000, okay? You don't, your payment doesn't go in and buy off each one item. Your every, the monthly payment that you make towards to every single product, and then you pay off at the last payment for every single item. So before your last payment, you own 99% of this, 99% of this, 99% of this, but you do not own 100% of any item. Okay? You understand? That means if you don't make the last payment, none of this is yours. You can't say, oh, I pay this much, so I need to take six items and, and give you back four. That's not the contract. The contract says, you, your payment is towards the every single item here. And you do not own any single one unless you pay everything off. Okay? If you fail to pay one payment, you default on the payment, and they'll take everything back. That's the same thing here, still. Okay? But in that case, the contract was written in a way it said it's pro product. Okay? Pro means it's by percentage. Okay? And then that African American lady was uneducated and she didn't understand the word in the contract. Okay? And then she filed a lawsuit against that you know, furniture shop or uh, I don't remember it's a uh, appliance shop. Um, and, then, and then she said it's unconscionable because I didn't understand the contract, okay? But the, of course the shop said, well, you signed it. This is your contract, your signature. But she said, I didn't understand. And the court agreed with her because the court says, why are you using Latin, not English, okay? Your lawyer can draft this contract using plain English, but you chose not to. The only explanation is you're trying to confuse people. So the court present the contract. Let's go back. Implied warranties. All right. There's a standard. There's a uh, expectation of the of the product. Okay. If I buy a car as is, there's an implied warranty that comes with it. I don't expect the the, the transmission to fall out of the car half an hour later. There's an expectation. There's an implied warranty. Do you maybe disclose potential problems or? You can exclude the car. Well, what I can say right here, the car may come on fire five minutes to leave the shop. <laughs> but there's an implied warranty. There's an expectation for this. You don't expect the car to go for another million dollars. <coughs> well, my car, I know the front struts. When I buy it, I need the front struts to be in place. So if something happens with the front struts, then, you know, I'll buy it. And the option, the last one is the express warranty, which is the misrepresentation. Okay? And Barry, this car. I know it's a little bit old. As is. Best car of four. You will run for another 350,000 miles, no problem. Okay, it goes for 35 miles, it broke down. Of course, you can come back and sue me for product liability. But it's a misrepresentation. Even though none of that is written in here. But uh, I misrepresented the fact. And then you believed it. Okay? The key thing is you believe in the promise. And that's the reason you bought the car. Yeah. What if you say something vague that kind of protects you, such as, you know how these old cars are, you never know what might happen, but it seems like it's pretty good. And I can comment, I mean, I can't make any comment. Well, it is a good car. specific. It should be specific. You, so you can't say that for like how to get away from the So sure it's so me is um, her blender, trust me, makes the best hot soup in the world. But and I believe her, that's the reason why. Alright? Questions? What how is the chapter twelve going to three? Chapter twelve. And that's where we're recovering right now. Or chapter three. Well, uh, well, uh, general towards, 
So it's just a stuff I covered. Okay? All right. Good night, guys. Let's check the fire.